What's going on guys? Welcome back to our crypto crash course brought to you by the Coin Collective. Today we are going to be talking about getting started. In the last episode we talked about Bitcoin, Ethereum, smart contracts, proof of work, what is blockchain? But I mean at this point you understand all the technology and the basics of this entire ecosystem. So how do you buy it? How do you get into it? How are you going to make these orders? So we're going to explain to you today the exchanges you need, what market and limit orders are. We're going to recommend the best exchanges. We're going to explain decentralized versus centralized exchanges and a few more things. So let's get started. All right, guys. So I got my iPhone pulled up and I'm going to show you how to send a cryptocurrency and what a blockchain address is. So I'm going to head on over to my Uphold account. So I'm going to send my buddy Douglas one XRP. Here I am in, in Uphold. The, this shows the current price of XRP on the, the hour, daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. I'm going to click Transact. For every single exchange, it can be different, but the process at the basics is always going to be the same. So we're going to go from XRP, one XRP, to Crypto Networks. We're going to the XRP Ledger Network. And in order to do this, we need to have the other person, which is in this case, Douglas's blockchain address. So I'm going to go ahead and get Douglas's blockchain address from him. So here's a quick tip. Whenever you are copying and pasting these addresses around or even scanning QR codes, which you can do in other, in, in other cases if you need to just quickly punch in a blockchain address, always check the first and last characters. Always do that because if you mess up one of these characters in this address, it will go to the wrong address or, and your funds will be lost forever. So don't do that. And a destination tag is optional. You don't always have to do it, but some exchanges require it for various reasons. Okay, so here we go, guys. I, I am on the screen and it says you are withdrawing from your XRP wallet to the XRP ledger network and it'll arrive in Douglas's wallet in exactly two to three seconds. With these apps also, to confirm a transaction, you need to use a Google Authenticator or there are a few other uh, third-party apps you can use and they have an auto-generated code that changes every 30 seconds. So here we go. I'm going to copy that code. Head back to my wallet. Bam, there we go. Okay, so that is the basics of just how to send or even receive a cryptocurrency of any kind. That process works, works exactly the same if you need to receive something. You just copy your friend's address, you paste it in there, you check the first few characters and last few characters to make sure it's correct, and then you're good to go. So let's get into market orders and limit orders. Some exchanges like KuCoin or Coinbase Pro will require you to decide whether you're going to use a market or limit order. This is very simple. A market order is just automatically buying that digital asset such as XRP at the market price. So say it is listed on the exchanges for $1.10, $1.11, and a dollar and 12 cents. You are buying up all that supply that is being offered at the best price. You're just getting the best price for that asset. A limit order is very different from, from a market order because when you put in a limit order, that is the only price that when you buy that asset such as XRP will fill at. If you want a hundred dollars worth of XRP at 50 cents, and you put in a limit order for it, you will only buy XRP at 50 cents. It will never fluctuate above or below that. And it also applies to selling. Limit orders and limit sell orders are very useful because you can automate certain things at price levels. So if you don't want to be sitting there in front of your computer waiting for the price action of one of your favorite coins to drop low enough to buy in or go high enough to sell out, you can set these limit orders ahead of time to buy in or sell out at certain levels. 
very easy. So we're gonna move into next what is called a decentralized exchange and a centralized exchange. And I'm gonna go ahead and recommend our favorites that, that we trust the most. A centralized exchange is just basically a company like Coinbase that is acting as an intermediary to purchase your crypto assets. When you are on a centralized exchange, they have what is called your private key on that exchange, and so do you. Your public key is just how you identify yourself on the blockchain. It's, uh, it's that long line of characters that you copy. Your private key is very important. Never give that out to anybody no, under any circumstances. Giving out your private key is just like giving out your credit card number. Think of the public address as a debit card. When I sent my friend Douglas that XRP, I used his public address as the card number on the front. I was able to then send him that XRP because that is the identifier on his blockchain ID, like that is the identifier for his account on Uphold. The reason you have a private key is because a public key only does sending. It only sends out things. The private key allows you to withdraw funds out of your account. And if I stole Douglas's debit card, I have his identifier, I have his public key, but I don't know his PIN. So I could not withdraw any of the money out of his account. That is why it is so incredibly important that you never give out your private key to anyone under any circumstances. Because they then now have the ability to execute that transaction and withdraw funds from your account. So back to decentralized and centralized exchanges. Centralized exchanges hold both your public and private key. Now this, does, this is not necessarily a bad thing, it just makes things easier for us. But a decentralized exchange adds a few, a few extra layers on top of it. It takes out the company or business like Uphold or KuCoin or Coinbase and you just have the coin you want and the coin you have and you swap it for another coin. Typically this is done on ERC-20, like the Ethereum network for ERC-20 tokens. If you wanted to go from wrapped Ethereum or Ethereum, we will get into wrapped tokens in another video. If you want to go from Ethereum to say Morpheus Network, which is another coin that we love, uh, you can go on these decentralized exchanges. You can execute this swap on Ethereum or any of the other networks that you're doing this decentralized exchange on without that centralized company as the intermediary. With Coinbase, you're making that swap with Coinbase as the person that executes the swap for you. With a decentralized exchange, it is done with liquidity pools and smart contracts on the Ethereum network or any other network that has smart contract capability and liquidity pools. One is company-based, one is peer-to-peer. -peer. With a decentralized exchange, you typically have to pay higher fees because you don't have that company executing that exchange for you from currency A to currency B or digital asset A to digital asset Z. So if you do it on the, the Ethereum network and you go from Ethereum to Morpheus Networks token, when you do that transaction, you have to pay gas fees. And the gas fees, think of it as literally the gas you put in your car to drive from Ethereum to that Morpheus token. In order for that transaction to make it through there, you have to pay that gas. You have to pay for that resource to make this transaction successful. And the reason for these high fees is because the proof of work consensus that we explained in the last video that Ethereum uses requires high amounts of electricity. So on the Ethereum network, if you want to speed up your transaction with what's called GUE, you pay more Ethereum to speed it up. The miners will then put your transaction higher up in the queue and because they're getting paid more for that transaction to go through. Also, this is another very important aspect. With a decentralized exchange, you don't have as much liquidity with certain tokens. Whereas on a centralized exchange, if you want to go from a token to another token, you typically don't have to worry about any liquidity problems. But they both, as I said, have their pros and cons. A lot of people like the idea of being able to swap between assets without any middleman and get, get rid of the big guy. Awesome, they just both do different things. We will also explain arbitrage and permanent loss and mar automated market makers in another video. 
But right now we're just focusing on decentralized, centralized exchanges, how to buy, and getting started. First thing you're going to need to do is get on one of these exchanges and create an account. It may sound difficult, but it is not. It just takes a little bit of time. You'll be all right. I personally would recommend one of the, one of the following. Either Uphold, KuCoin, Bittrex, and there's a few other that I will put up on the screen that you guys can get into. These are very reputable companies that offer a, a very large amount of coins that I personally think will be worth something in the future. So let's head to the computer and set up our new account. So here we are guys on KuCoin.com. KuCoin is one of our favorite exchanges, but it's a little intimidating at first once you get on it because of all the charts and graphs and buttons and stuff all over it. It can be, it can be confusing, but trust me, it's not as hard as it seems. So I'm here now at sign up. You just type in your email. Douglas, could you give me the code really quickly? 698. 226. Fantastic. Make sure you set a password. Submit your password. Bam, we're here. So when you make these accounts on these exchanges, one of the things you're going to have to do is KYC. This is pretty normal for withdrawing funds to a hot or cold wallet or just basically moving your funds off of the exchange. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. You just got to get out your driver's license and snap a quick picture of it and then maybe take a selfie. This is just to make sure that you're not laundering your money and, and working for a terrorist organization. I'm sure none of you are though. So. All right guys, now that we have our account set up on KuCoin, let's go ahead and make a quick order. So here we are on KuCoin. It, now you can do these, these orders a ton of different ways. You can connect your debit card, you can do an ACH transaction, which is basically just connecting your crypto account directly to your bank account. Or you could even do a wire and send your money via a wire to one of these exchanges and it'll just be deposited as US dollars into your account. It all depends on what the exchanges offer as a service. So on KuCoin, you typically just buy and sell Bitcoin or one of these large assets, Shiba, any of the ones that are offered directly with the fiat on-ramp, uh, on XRP. You typically buy these assets on KuCoin with a debit card. So if you want to buy one of these assets and not spend an arm and a leg in transaction fees, I would buy my assets on Uphold, or another place that allows you to get large sums of money onto the exchanges without paying an arm and a leg in credit or debit card fees. I'm gonna buy $5 worth of XRP. So you go in here, it gives you the best payment channel, which is Banksa currently. You confirm it, make sure you're buying the amount you want. After this happens, you'll be taken to a channel where you would input your payment information and then you'd be ready to go to buy these assets. Now, don't be intimidated if you're on a computer and you are trying to swap between another asset and you get this big old chart in your face like this with Bitcoin. You see buy down here, that's all you got to do. You go in and you change the kind of buy order. If you want to put in a market order like I was talking about earlier, you just hit limit and you select market and that'll get you the best market price to purchase your Bitcoin. If you want to purchase Bitcoin at $55,000 and no higher, then all you do, you switch back to limit, type in the amount, the limit you want to buy at, Bam, you, won't, you, you will not buy any Bitcoin unless it drops down to $55,000. All right, so real quick, let's talk about wallets. A wallet is exactly what you think it is. It's a place that holds your money. So all you need to know about this, you don't gotta get too deep, there's hot and there's cold wallets. You're gonna hear that term thrown around a lot when people are talking about ledgers or uh, storing their cryptocurrencies. A hot wallet is any centralized exchange 
or any exchange for that matter, that has access to your private key and your credentials, and it is held on that exchange. Your cryptocurrencies are held on that exchange. A cold wallet is, say, a ledger. A ledger is a form of a cold wallet that you yourself hold all of your credentials and your private key. Your crypto isn't stored inside the little hardware wallet, but your seed phrases and your private key are stored on that wallet, offline, off of any exchange. No one could ever touch it except for you. So with the hot wallet, this is very important to know. If you lose your password to your Coinbase account, Uphold account, KuCoin account, you can typically get your account back. On a cold wallet, since you are the sole custodian of your assets, you are responsible for holding them. If you lose your ledger or your phone breaks that you had your cold wallet on, it's gone. Unless you do what you're supposed to do and you write down your seed phrase. When you create your cold wallet, it'll pop up on your screen with a 12 to 24 characters and they're just random words like cat, uh, dog, building, canoe. You write those down on a sheet of paper. Do not write them in the notes app on your phone. Do not write them anywhere on a computer because if your computer or phone was somehow hacked and the hacker got access to that string of words, your wallet is donezo, it's gone. They'll wipe your whole account. So you get a piece of paper, you write the seed phrase in numbered order on that piece of paper, and you put it somewhere safe. So if you ever were to lose your cold wallet, you'd be able to restore it. This is the only way you can restore a cold wallet. So if you really want to wear your tinfoil hat and protect your ledger or your cold wallet, I would suggest buying a Faraday cage so if a solar flare ever happens and the whole grid's knocked out, your crypto's safe. So just as a recap, today we went over setting up an account, buying crypto, what kind of wallets there are, what kind of orders you can have. We went over centralized versus decentralized exchanges. This should give you a pretty solid understanding of how to get started. So thank you guys for watching episode two. We are going to link all of the exchanges and cold wallets and all the things you would need that we would recommend you use below. And please use our referral code, it helps us out so much. See you next time.